How are we doing today? Good. So um, I don't think it's any huge secret or anything that we did not execute um, on a consistent enough basis, you know, in this last game, and um, you know, too many turnovers, penalties, mental errors on defense, um, sacks. Uh, I mean, things that are helpful in being consistent uh, in terms of whether it's sustaining drives, uh, not giving up big plays that you know lead to field position and scores. So the focus is 100% on how we get a turnaround. You know, the future is now. All right, so how do we get our players to, um, we got to do a better job as coaches to help them uh, be able to play you know, better, more consistently in the game, put them in a position where they have the best chance to be successful. Uh, but I think all these things are fixable, very fixable. I believe in our players. I think we've got good players. Uh, I think, you know, Texas has a good team. And um, it's like I said before, you know, it was a test. Uh, it was like, you know, an early test in the semester. Uh, we didn't grade out very well on the test. So, you know, what are we going to do to get a better grade? I think that's what we have to really learn and grow from and make a commitment to. And, you know, I think our players uh, with the kind of character and attitude that we've shown, you know, so far as a team, I think they'll respond the right way. And I think the coaches will do the same. You know, South Florida is um, had a first year coach and, you know, they're um, moving the ball and scoring points. And, um, you know, it's not about necessarily always who we play. It's how we technically execute against the team that we play so we have a chance to be successful. It's a road game. It's our first road game. Uh, they've got some good players. They've got a pretty good quarterback. Uh, they play hard on defense. So um, everyone's capable. Uh, but it's about you playing to your standard, us playing to our standard, and trying to play the kind of football that we need to play so that we have a chance to be more successful on a more consistent basis. Start over here with Charlie. Hey, Coach. Um, when you go back and look at the film, what do you see as the biggest issue with the pass rush, and how do you kind of get more of that going forward? Well, you know, I think we gave up one sack on pressure. You know, most of it was we gave up a sack on three-man rush. Uh, you know, we gave up several sacks on four-man rushes. Uh, I think we're too soft setting in the, in the line. Uh, we got to be firmer in protection. Uh, pocket can't collapse, but uh, people have to get open. Quarterback has to process quickly and get the ball out of his hand. Uh, we can't hold the ball. Um, so it's a combination of all those things, I think, that um, was a problem. But it wasn't like there was some scheme that they were running that we didn't have it picked up. Uh, we just didn't get it blocked like we need to. Nick? What do you see as the identity of this offense? Uh, I don't know that in this past game we had much of identity. I think we started out early in the game being able to run the ball effectively. Um, and we did not mix up the play action pass and the, the complement the run game. And eventually, you know, it got harder and harder to run the ball. Um, we did make some explosive plays on offense, but uh, it's too like hit or miss. You gotta, you gotta have consistency to be able to sustain drives. And um, that's the one thing that, that you know we did do. We made explosive plays, but we weren't consistent enough in terms of developing identity to use your term. Uh, but the identity that we'd like to have is to be physical enough to be able to run the ball consistently, effectively, uh, but also be able to have a good play action game to go with it, be able to drop back when we need to, and be efficient and effective in all those areas. And, uh, I can't say that we were in this game, other than making some explosive plays. We, we didn't do that well enough. The left of Katie. How would you evaluate the defense's ability to create pressure on the quarterback in the first two games? I, I think it was okay in the first game. Of course, you know, it wasn't the same level of competition. Um, and I think that, obviously, we didn't get any sacks in the game. Um, we didn't have a lot of success, the kind of success that we'd like to have on third down. Um, and I think that's something that we need to improve on, no doubt. Um, you know, they, we didn't do a great job of covering them.
Sometimes you get coverage sacks. So we didn't cover them long enough that the quarterback couldn't get the ball out of his hand quickly. And we didn't affect the quarterback in the game at all. We needed to improve on that. No problem with Chase? This two-for-one game contract with South Florida is a really unusual thing. I think it's the only two-for-one Alabama's been involved in since you've been here. Do you have any thoughts on why that style of contract is so uncommon? Well, I, I think the goal is to, when you're trying to play home-and-home -home games, the goal is to try to enhance the quality of the opponents that you have. So, you know, you just can't go out and say, hey, let's play a game, and everybody agrees to it. You, you, you know, you got to negotiate your way through to see who you can play and who you can't play. And, um, you know, it's been our goal. Now, this was before con conference realignment, so that may have some impact on them in the future, was we wanted, since we're not going to play in a neutral site game, can we get two quality opponents to be able to play in every season besides the SEC games? So we have 10 games that, um, and look, it's not easy to find people that will play you. And sometimes you have to give and take a little bit to try to get those games to where we have a quality home schedule and we are playing two teams that are Division One caliber decent teams to play. So it's scheduling is very difficult. And we try to get it to where we're playing two teams and I think in most years we are. Moving forward. Go to Nick. Uh, how would you assess the players' energy levels heading to the Texas game and if it was up to the standard you had for team? Yeah, I think the energy level was good. I think we started out the game really good. Um, did we sustain it for 60 minutes in the game? No. Did we play well in the fourth quarter? No. But it doesn't have as much about how you started. You know, we started out, I thought, really well in the game. Um, good energy, physical, knocked the ball off of them a couple times. Ran the ball effectively in the beginning of the game, but our ability to sustain was not what it needs to be, and we didn't play well enough in the fourth quarter. Back to Ryan. We talked. We talked after the game about the Jalen Burrow's confidence level on the sidelines. He came to talk after you spoke on Saturday night, and we were really impressed with how positive he was despite not the best game. Is that what you're looking for throughout the year? How big is that to be that confident player? Uh, I think it's important in all positions. You know, the one thing you don't want to do is get frustrated as a player. Um, you don't want one play to affect the next play. And to stay positive, but you can say stay positive, but we all have self-talk, right? We all, you got to believe it. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to do this, but don't believe you can do it. You got to believe and trust in yourself too. So um, I think the players stayed positive. They tried to keep their energy level up. They didn't get frustrated in the game, and Jalen didn't either. Um, but still, you got to trust and have faith, confidence, in doing what you coach to do on a consistent basis, and that's going to help you be successful. Left middle with Austin. Yeah, Coach, on Saturday night you said the Texas game was a midterm, not the final. Um, you know, with a long season still to go, how do you think the team's mindset is right now? Well, I haven't talked to the team since after the game. I'll see them today, you know, when we watch the film. But um, I, I would be shocked if this team does not respond uh, in a really positive way um, to try to get better, to try to do the things they need to do to get fixed. Um, but, you know, we, we, we have to have better execution. We've got to do simple things better, whether it's pass protection, blocking, control line of scrimmage, not giving up big plays on defense. What, what, whatever. Uh, those are the things that are going to change. Uh, this, this is not just about attitude of player. They all wanted to win more than any fan, more than anybody in this room. And they put all the work and preparation into it. And, you know, I feel badly for them that we weren't able to do whatever we need to do as coaches to try to help them have a better chance to be successful in the game. And we're all responsible for it, and we're all going to try to work hard to get better. So I would be shocked if um, these guys aren't, don't come in here today with the attitude that we're going to go out there and try to improve and get better, and the future is now. I mean, we've, we've got to do it now. That's, that's the main thing. Mike Rodak. 
What have you seen from Tyler Buckner over the last couple of weeks as he's had more time in the system? Yeah, well, he played really well in the last scrimmage, and um, I, he's done well in practice. So we feel really good about sort of how he's continued to improve and develop and gain confidence in what he's doing and have a good feeling around, you know, the teammates and the receivers and all that type of thing. Time for two more, Joe, and then it's Coach, throughout the offseason, you talked about having confidence in Jed seven or eight starters along the offensive line. Did you have any consideration of making any moves during the game along the offensive line? Uh, not really. You know, we have confidence in the guys that are playing, and um, sure they need to play better. But, um, you know, if we thought somebody was more ready to play, we we want the competition. We want guys to improve, to compete for playing time. But we also want them to be able to take advantage of the opportunity when they get it. So they got to prepare themselves properly to be able to do that. And we're going to keep working with as many guys as we can to get them to be able to play winning football. Right here in the back. Hey, Coach, just one of your assessment. I know it's been a, a small sample size to this point. Just the pass catchers, receivers, and tight ends through two games so far. Well, we only had one drop ball. One thing that you could consider being a drop ball in the last game. Um, so that part of it was pretty decent in the last game. I don't think we always got the ball to guys at times. And I think there were times when we didn't do a good enough job of getting open so that we had options. Um, so it's a combination of, I'm not disappointed in our receivers. I think our receivers can make explosive plays. Uh, everyone's got to be more consistent so we can develop a timing in the passing game between the protection, the receivers, and the quarterback so that we can be more consistent in what we're doing and eliminate some of the negative plays. That's the key to the drill. All right, Coach, that's all we got. All right, thank you.